Oh, Leanne, it's so great to be chatting with you today. And um, when we first met, and you were telling me about how you worked in the seniors care industry yourself, and then became a family member. Uh, it was so interesting and intriguing because it's not very often I get to meet people who similar to me have had both sides of the experience. And so I'm wondering if we can just start the conversation by you sharing a little bit about your background working in seniors care and as a family member, and then we can get into some of the conversation about the Now What book. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, yes, I, I was so grateful to have had the opportunity to uh, hear you speak at an education day that I attended uh, with the company in long-term care that I worked for. And your words and your emotion um, when you shared your journey in the Now What book um, and the experiences you had with your, your loved ones and your family members really resonated with me. Um, and I took away a lot from that first meeting um, in how we were doing things uh, in our long-term care home uh, that I worked in. And I realized that there was a lot of work that needed to be done um, on admission day and really thinking about what family members were going through on that very difficult day. And then you indicated that you became a family member yourself when you needed to move your um, parent into long-term care, is that right? Yes, um, my dad was admitted into a long-term care home um, and my dad had dementia. And, you know, I had, by then I had been in long-term care for about 15 years and I had tons of training and experiences, um, tons of courses under my belt. I was GPA trained. And when that admission day came for my dad, all those things that I knew and all the training that I had uh, kind of went out the window. Um, because all that mattered to me was that this is my dad and he's now being admitted into long-term care. And I was just the daughter at that point, um, going through the motions with my mom of realizing what this new world for us was going to look like in terms of, you know, my mom living at home and having to sell her home and my dad living in long-term care and how I was going to support both of them, um, you know, in this new chapter in their lives, um, you know, both of them living in two different places. Um, my dad was in a home about 20 minutes from where we live. Um, so we, it was all about juggling all of that. Um, and, you know, and I really struggled with it, even though I had all this training and all this experience in long-term care. Um, so I totally, at that moment, understood how family members felt on that admission day and how lost and scared you feel. And in a way you're grieving because you're grieving what once was with your, with your loved one and just scared of the unknown and what tomorrow was gonna look like after that day of admission. I tend to think of it as it's a real change in identity because when we are the primary sole caregiver taking care of our spouse, our parent, a loved one, and we have all of the control and we're making all of the decisions and you know it's it can be tiring and exhausting and frustrating and all of those things. And then of course there's a situation that happens that it becomes apparent that a higher level of care is needed. And you're right, that first day, you know, on the on the home side, admissions are um, a standard operating process. And the average size home is probably doing a few admissions every week. And yet for the family coming in, this is probably the first, maybe the only time that they're making this heartbreaking, significant decision that they never planned or wanted. You know, it's like this unwanted marriage that happens. And I think what I really try to convey and now what is that for the family member, their role is now changing. They are now going from being perhaps a sole primary caregiver to now being a partner with a care team with people that they've never met, they don't know, and they haven't yet built a relationship with. And so it's interesting for you where you mentioned you had all of that work experience, but it's like you forgot all of it 
because now all of a sudden you are looking through the lens of a daughter and you're experiencing this life-changing impact that's happening. So what did you find was helpful for you in order to better prepare and um, help you adjust to your new role as a community family member? I think just talking about it, talking to staff, talking to other um, family members, um, just talking it through, talking about, you know, how I felt about it. Um, and, you know, I would tell the staff of the long-term care home that my dad was working in, like, I just feel so lost. And, um, and they would, you know, they were very supportive and helpful um, in helping me, you know, get through those steps of what, you know, my dad's new life was going to look like. And, and, and for my mom and myself on how we were going to get, you know, through this journey together. And also talking to, you know, the coworkers that I had in the home that I worked with and working that through once things settled um, and things, you know, I was starting to process things in my head. I was asking myself, wow, if this is how I felt on admission day, how are the family members coming into our home feeling on admission day and what that must look like for them and what they're feeling. And I think at that moment, I was able to take my own personal experiences and try the best that I could to help support new family members and residents not feeling so scared um, on admission day and, you know, making them realize that we'll get through this together um, and that we'll do the best that we can, that, you know, the transition can go smoothly and, and it's okay if, you know, if you feel upset, if you're sad, if you're angry, because you're going to go through these emotions. I know I did. Um, you know, you go through these things, you know, why? <laughs> and like your, like your book says, what now? Like, what do we do now? And, um, and it's okay to go through all those feelings. And it's perfectly normal. Um, you know, I, I, I laugh about it. Um, in your book, you talk about, you know, the different um, emotions that family members go through. And when you talk about, you know, the jalapeno family member, and, and I would joke and I say, oh my God, I hope I'm not that family member. I don't wanna be that family member. Um, however, I was, because there are certain moments where you just feel so overwhelmed. And, you know, it could be like, you know, I was tired, I was stressed, I, I was sad and I, see things that my dad was going through and I go, oh man, it's just not him. It's just not my dad. And if certain things, because I knew, um, you know, how long-term care worked because of my experiences. And there were times where I just lose it um, and became that jalapeno family member. And, and now I understood again, when family members feel this way, it's just because they don't know. They don't know they're, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're stressed, they're grieving. Um, and it's just such a whole new world. So it's just, how do you get through those emotions and, and, you know, come, come back down to say, okay, what do we do now? How do we get through this moment? Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm so delighted to be partnering with Family Councils Ontario with the video series education program that really breaks down the key components of the Now What book, because you touched on a few things, that admission anxiety that families feel in that first day, the knowledge gap that exists because families don't know what they don't know and it's not their fault. We haven't been educated about, I mean, the, our healthcare system is complex on the best of days. And then you've got the seniors care element of healthcare that a lot of families don't know about. And certainly the last couple of years with uh, all of the negative media hasn't been helpful. And then there's this emotion gap that the families are coming in and sometimes, and I can speak for myself and why I wrote about though having those jalapeno moments, because like you, I had my fair share of jalapeno moments and having disproportionate reactions to situations that were usually because of something that I expected that wasn't met and that I felt disappointed. But 
sometimes the expectations that I had were unrealistic because I didn't know any better, right? Because we're not getting that education. And that's why in the book, I've outlined 20 misconceptions to help the homes better educate and provide insight to families so that those disappointments can, can be less and less because they're better educated and informed. And so I'm curious when you mentioned about having read now what, and as a family member, if what, what key takeaways you got from the book? There were so many, Deborah. Um, it's really difficult just to pinpoint. I saw myself both as when you were talking about how staff felt. Um, we often forget, um, I know that, you know, as, as a family member and as a staff person, on that admission day, the staff are also grieving a loss um, of a resident that they cared for. And then, you know, you're bringing in this new family member and this new resident um, that staff have to, you know, get to learn um, all over again. And that resonated with me because you're, you're having two separate emotions and feelings and um, people that are going through very similar but also different things so it is a very difficult day and it's to remember that both sides the staff and the family member are hurting um, they're grieving they're both going through change and it's a stressful day for everyone you know families do have some misconceptions and you know they don't know so when they come in they're they're feeling lost misconceptions or ideas that they think what long-term care is is not really the truth or what exactly is happening in long-term care so then they become you know somewhat confused or frustrated because it's not what they were expecting like you mentioned earlier Deborah so it's again it's like a relearning or starting from scratch about what this new life is going to look like and what you know community living in this long-term care home um, is going to be and how everyone has to live harmoniously together in a setting of you know like in the home I worked in 128 people um, and then you know and then your staff um, so it's it's big and it's a completely different entity when you walk through those doors um so that there are so many points in your book that I could you know as I was reading it and going you know through the book I'm like oh this is my professional hat now that I can see it through the, my professional lens and then other you know things that you talked about I was like I'm wearing my daughter hat now and I know exactly you know that feeling in that moment um you know, of how I felt as a caregiver, as a daughter, um, watching my dad, you know, entering this new phase of his life and having to live in long-term care. So I think every section of the book, and, you know, when you mention the porch um, and how you go through all these different stages, uh, that was very helpful as well. Um, and I think there are so many points in the book that can help support family members and staff um, about the feelings, the emotions, um, the commonalities um, of what everyone's feeling on that day of admission. I mean, and that's why I put in the title of it, the emotional journey of long-term care for families. Because what I recognized was there was a lot of effort and energy as it should be, right? With, with my husband, Ty, and my mom and my dad that all moved into long-term care and assisted living. And yet for me, I felt like as the family member, what, what kind of care and support, education, insight, hand-holding am I getting? And that was the piece for me that was really missing. And I feel like with that missing piece, that's why we do see things go a bit sideways in that relationship. And again, it starts with in the very beginning, if the families don't know what they don't know, they get a phone call to say that their mom had a fall, but they think that, well, I thought that my mom was going to get 24-7 one-on-one care. And the home's like, 
I don't know where you heard that from. But so to be able to say right up front, these are the, this is what community long-term care living is. This is what it isn't. And I also encourage families to think about what wasn't working when you were taking care of your loved one at home or where they were in the community. Because even if they're coming from retirement living, hospital, uh, from it, or from their familial home getting home care, there's something that wasn't working. And to remind them that moving them into long-term care doesn't mean everything is going to be perfect all the time, right? There, yeah. there are going to be the pros and the cons, just like there were pros and cons at home. So the, uh, my vision for this book is to combine both knowledge and information, as well as acknowledgement and insight about that emotional journey so that families can recognize that maybe the anger or the frustration or the sadness that they're feeling is really about grief and the grieving, like you had said earlier, Deanne, that grieving of what was that is no longer. And it is a change management process for both sides. Uh, so I'm just really excited about the opportunity for us to get this information out to your members, for family councils to be able to share with families. And I think it's also a series that staff can really benefit from and look at how they can engage their families in conversation and education and using the Now What book. So I just want to say thank you so much for the invitation and the opportunity to partner with Family Councils Ontario. I'm so excited to hear about the kinds of conversations and insights that will, will come from the information that we're sharing. Thank you, Deborah. And we are so excited as well to you know, have you partner with us in this project that we're working on and help better support you know, family members in long-term care and to you know, cultivate our family councils to you know, play a really significant role in supporting new family members coming in. And hopefully those scared and unknowns um, will be a little bit less um, on that admission day and we can make it, you know, a little bit better for families and residents coming into long-term care. So thank you so much for uh, taking the time. I really enjoyed it and I look forward um, on our future endeavors together. Thank you.